Hi, Patreon subscribers. I've got this book called The Best Chord Changes for the Best Known Songs, 100 of the Best Known Standard Songs with Professionally Altered Chords by Frank Mantooth. And of course, Frank Mantooth was a great jazz player and educator, and he wrote that book about, you know, chord voicings where he really covers the, uh, the, the fourth chords, you know, chordal harmony. But I thought I'd go through just a couple of these songs today and take a look at some of his professionally altered chords. Um, here's Alfie now. I just put a, I just put a, a piano solo of that up on Facebook. So if you're, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, uh, you know, track me down over there, Tony Winston. That's where the video is. Okay, All of Me. Everybody likes this song. And, you know, these voicings that Frank Mantooth puts in here are not really anything that's going to set the world on fire. They're pretty standard stuff, you know, like if you have an E seventh chord, you can just put a B minor seventh in front of it, you know, E being a, a dominant chord and this being its relative two, two, five, one. Right? And the one chord can be major, minor, or dominant. And here we go. Here's the B minor and the E7 <laughs> with a sharp nine there. That plus there, to me that's, and I mean not just to me, to anybody who knows, that really is like a signal for an altered dominant. So the sharp nine is an alteration. The plus is the five moved up. I tend to call that the flat 13. You know, there's the 13. And of course, there's our famous box voicing. Could be a B flat, could be, you know, I mean, an F minor six, but right now it's an E altered. All right, here we go from the top, and I don't think I need to explain much more to you all about this, so I'll just play it. That's a pretty nice reharmonization. Uh, like I said, pretty standard stuff. Down to that E flat. Some of these chord symbols can be a little intimidating. E flat 13, sharp 11. But you learn shortcuts for this stuff. If I see that chord symbol, you know, I play the E flat dominant structure because, you know, any number above seven means a seven. So E flat 13 is an E flat seventh chord with a 13 with a sharp 11, and you can put the 9 in just as well, and I just always think of this as like a, an F triad, any inversion, you know, over that structure, and so it's, it's, it's a fast chord to do. Do it in any key very quickly. C with a D, F with a G. Practice it around the cycle. What was the other one there that was kind of an odd one there? Um, well, that last chord there, G13 with a sharp 11. I don't really have a quick way of doing that one. Um, you know, it is this. So, you know, oh gosh, I must have been like 23 years old and working at the Concord Hotel up in New York all summer long. There was like seven bands working up there. Every single piano player up there knew more than I did by a factor of 10. Um, and I remember a keyboard player showing me a G7 like this. All right? Or a C7 like this. There's the flat nine sharp 11 and this. So it's just kind of that structure and it's an easy chord to find, you know, F7, right? Just kind of move those two like that and you've got it and that's the chord 
uh, you know, you can, you can add a 13 to it, I suppose. And there, there's another real common chord here. Oh yeah, G13 flat nine. That, that again, too, is like, if you put like an E triad over a G7, and you don't need the B because it's in the E triad, so that's just an easy way to get that chord. A, uh, C7, F7, you know, just go around the cycle. Uh-oh. <laughs> Right? Yeah, just a little bit low sounding. And you know, this is how you learn chords is um, find really great voicings, take them through the cycle, and then drill yourself a little bit. Give me a G, give me an A flat, give me a D, give me that one I missed, F sharp. There it is. April in Paris. All right, now, you know, typical chord is that. Anything works over a pedal tone, All right? You can go. And any kind of chord too, you know. So, and that's a good introduction to any song, you know. You could do a three, six, five. the bass player just goes, you know, like that or something. And, you know, it always works. So, does it again. All right, you can't get much more dissonant than that. And then. A C sus is just holding on to that G minor seventh for an extra beat or two, and then resolving it. More uh, pedal tone stuff there. You know, I kind of like a diminished chord better there than that G, but. I really don't understand the G flat diminished. That could be a, that could be a misprint. It could be like G sharp diminished but basically the same thing here, just a little more classical. And then. All right, there's that, is that the chord again? It's got the flat nine, but it's got a flat 13 too, so you can't do that one, you gotta do that one, yeah. And here, I like this. The, the, plus is a plus five, so we'll move it to there, and then it moves to here. <laughs> so you got this inner voicing moving here, and... All right, there's that sharp 11 chord with, this time they put the nine in there, and the melody is the 13, so they could have written F13 sharp 11, like we just talked about. Suspension, okay. That'd be a. Uh, that's a, you know, not much time to do that chord. I don't know if that's really necessary. And a 6 9 chord? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just leave the root out, and then you've got the other chord symbol. And F13, you know, it means F7. Okay. That's kind of nice because you got B7, then you've got B, and it kind of surrounds the melody note that you're going to. But, sure, why not? Be careful, it's my heart. <laughs> Frank Sinatra sang that song. I used to sing that song too. Um, words and music by Irving Berlin. Be careful, 
<laughs> oh, I haven't sung yet today. Be careful. Be careful what you post up on the internet. It's not my watch you're holding, it's my heart. It's not the note I sent you that you quickly burned. It's not the book I lent you that you never return be careful it's my heart this heart with which so willingly I part it's yours to take to keep or break but please before you start be careful remember it's my heart and you know, I like the way Frank sings. I don't really idolize him all that much. One of my uh, few musical heroes, you know, I don't really idolize musicians all that much. It's, uh, Art Tatum, uh, Bach, Chopin, Willie Nelson. All right, one more, Beautiful Love. I just realized after what, how many years have I been playing this song? I always go like this. That's not the melody. That's my ring arm. I always do that too, that A over F. That's really nice. This be now 13 with a flat nine, so. And you see he's written those inner voicings there. That's the real advantage to doing this, these kind of chords, you know, you get that. And you know, if you're arranging or something for a big band or, or you know, even a small band. It's nice to have, you know, one of the one of the background horns, the trombone or something playing those notes. That's reharmonizing in a way that really destroys the song. Uh, that's my own reharmonization, by the way. So, you know, I kind of stay on the A7, and then, you know, that diminished chord can go four different places. I, instead of D minor, I went to F minor sixth, and then, kind of using some negative harmony, I'm going to C minor next, G minor next, and then D minor next. And that gets me back to the song. So that's a good reharm for, for, you know, if you're soloing or something, but the melody does not fit there. <laughs> See, now here I'm going to C. That doesn't really work. And here I'm going, you know, to G. I guess it could, could kind of work. Thank you all so much. Uh, if you have any suggestions for the channel, videos, uh, subjects, songs, things you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Thanks.